I'm Bronco, and this is the Card of the Day calendar for Monday, June 13th. Rejoice, everybody. It's World Softball Day. And on the left side of your screen, you can see me stepping up to the plate during my college days. All the scores and highlights from Sunday's action in Major League Baseball can be found on the right side of your screen, although I'm not going to put in that I did get a hit in this at bat. Now let's move on to history. On this date in 1984, the Chicago Cubs swing a trade with Cleveland. The Cubs send out a pair of outfielders, Joe Carter and Mel Hall, while Cleveland sends back a package of catcher Ron Hasse, pitcher George Frazier, and a right-hander by the name of Rick Sutcliffe. Suddy was dominant on the north side, posting a record of 16-1 with a 2.69 earned run average in 20 starts. He was the National League Cy Young Award winner, took fourth in MVP voting, finishing behind teammate Ryan Sandberg, and helped the Cubs get within a game of the World Series that season. Carter went on to have a great career of his own, hitting 151 homers in six years with his new team, before the Tribe flipped him for a solid haul that netted Sandy Alomar, Carlos Baerga, and Chris James. I bet you thought I was going to say another word there. Also on the state in 2004, Brad Lidge had what could charitably be called an interesting inning, as Houston defeats Milwaukee 5-4 to at Miller Park. After working a routine three-up, three-down inning in the sixth, he came back to pitch the seventh. Here's the play-by-play -play of what would unfold in what was a scoreless inning, believe it or not. He hit Junior Spivey to get things going, then committed a balk to move him to second. He struck out Jeff Jenkins, but it was on a wild pitch, which allowed the Brett Favre lookalike to reach first safely, and Spivey took third on the play. He then loaded the bases by walking Lyle Overbay. However, he bounced back to strike out Keith Ginter, Ben Grieve, and Chad Moeller in your typical frame in which the Brew Crew netted no runs on no hits with no errors while stranding three. Also, earlier in the game, Brewers starting pitcher Ben Sheets threw an immaculate inning as he set down Peter Monroe, Craig Biggio, and Jose Vizcaino in the third inning on nine pitches. Birthdays on this day, and grab your catcher's gear for this one, We'll start with Ernie Witt, who turned 70 today. The TTM favorite was an all-star when he hit 19 homers in 1985. He played 15 years in the big leagues in all, most with Toronto. He finished with 938 hits and slugged 134 homers, but unfortunately was no longer with the Blue Jays by the time they won back-to-back -back World Series titles. Jonathan Lucroy turns 36 today. The two-time All-Star backstop led the National League with 53 doubles during the 2014 season and is, or was, a 274 career hitter with 217 two-baggers among his 1,134 career hits. And James McCann turns 32 today. Unfortunately, he's spending it on the injured list for the Mets. The right-hander has a 196 average with a homer and six RBIs in 21 games this year for the Mets. His best year to date came in 2019 when he belted 18 homers during an all-star season for the White Sox. And... A special shout-out to Jose Ortiz. I'll own up to this one. He was going to be a player I built my fantasy team around when I drafted him in 2001. It um, didn't quite work out as planned, and I've been mocked for several years since. As Ortiz played in just 136 games over three seasons, batting 243 with 14 homers and 51 RBIs. Hey, that wouldn't be that bad of a year for a fantasy second baseman. Come on. Anyway, June is 1985 Tops Month. We're going to go back to Joe Carter. Love this card. Shows him with the tribe here. And he would obviously go on to have a great career with them, San Diego for a bit, and obviously with the Blue Jays, including that walk-off game, World Series, I should say, winning Homer against the Phillies. You've been watching the Card of the Day calendar. I'm going to go play some softball. So sports out.